I'm Edward St. Pay. Welcome to NITIC. Well, you know, we've had some great performances on this show over this last six months. We're compiling some of our greatest performances and putting them into specific shows. Tonight, we've got the great, legendary Bobby Rush interview with two performances and the new, young version of the blues classic, Mr. Grady Champion, interview with two performances. Stay tuned. Since 1849, Carter Jewelers has been a part of Jackson's rich history. Over 163 years later, we've not only survived, Carter Jewelers has flourished. From generation to generation, we've established a tradition of excellence. Our reputation is built on customer satisfaction, service, and trust. Every piece of jewelry is hand-picked, so you know you're getting the best value. Nobody says I do like we do at Carter Jewelers. Come see us and be part of our history. Well, we're back with Bobby Rush, and uh, Bobby, uh, what are you going to play for us? Well, since we're from Louisiana, both of us, I guess I could do something that you can relate to from down home way. Ele kind of alligator kind of a stuff, you it's, know. It sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Rush. <clears throat> Way down in Louisiana, down in Cajun land, folks got something going down there called K Bar Cook the Tootsie. Dig you on the Scooby Doo, dig you on the Scooby Die, you old Pookie Poo, you. Uh huh, uh huh, what I'd like to do to you. Chomp. Get a hip to the consultation of the Bula way. Golly, golly, Miss Molly, everything is copathetic now. Oh, look at you. Girl, you old pookie poo, you, you old pookie poo, you. Hey, little swamp, mama, what I'd like to do to you. Swamp girl, that is. I get a hip to the consultation all the boo way. Hey, pretty mama, your girl done time in the pokey. Your mama's hip, daddy's on a trip. Show sure looking good, you old pookie poo, you. Ah, uh ha, -huh, ah, uh ha, -huh. you pookie poo, you. I get a hip to the consultation on the Boulogne Wheel. Now what I'm talking about, if you don't know, I'm talking about a little girl down in New Orleans, eat poke salad, call it ton of green. Bow-legged girl, that is. The kind you can sing about, you said. Chicken in the car, and the car won't go. That's the way you spell Chicago. Knife and a fork, huh? And a plate of green. That's the way you spell New Orleans. Hey, little girl, in the tight sweater. Let me tell you right now, girl, you sure looking mellow. Pookie poo, you. Pookie Poo ain't nothing but a girl. Stand about five feet five. Big hip, big leg. When you look at them, all you can say is, ha, 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 gator time. That's Louisiana talk. Creole, that is. <laughs> Talking to Bobby Rush, we just heard uh, a couple of great songs, and uh, Bobby, we uh, 
we're really honored to have you with us on the show. Well, thank you for having me around, man, because I'm, it's good to be here. Someone that I came at a club the other night, <clears throat> my, I had my blue jean on, the cap across my head, going to do a sound check. So my driver kept telling me, Bobby Rush, put some clothes on, because some people going to be there, and somebody may notice you. And I used the word, at my age, you want to be noticed. Just, <laughs> just want to be noticed. But I said that in a joking fashion because uh, I'm just a plain old country boy. But when I think about uh, where I could be, or where it could have been, I could have been, I'm so happy to be who I am now. Because when I look at myself, myself, BB, uh, Fast Domino, Little Richard, Chuck Berry, Buddy Guy, but it got a little bit younger, but he's still in this ball field that we're in. Few other guys around, but I'm talking about these mainstream kind of guys, and I'm one of them. If you take, it, if you think about the top five blues singers in the world, especially talk about the black blues singer, you got to count me in. So I'm a blessed man to be here among the the greats, you know. And the, the fact that you're healthy and uh, feeling good and feel still good. very active doing stuff yeah. at 80, how what do you attribute that to? Uh, Blessing. That ain't nothing you can attribute to the blessing. I, you know, sometimes I think uh, uh, that it's something I'm doing, but it ain't nothing I'm doing because I just eat uh, pretty decent. Uh, I had a couple of beers in my lifetime. I don't drink. I don't know that's a part of it. <clears throat> but I don't smoke. So, I, you, know, I, yeah. you know, I don't get high in no form or fashion. That ain't got nothing to do with me feeling good, but uh, I feel better when I say it. <laughs> You know, so I, I don't know what it is. I'm just a blessed man to be around. Uh, I'm so blessed to be around to do what I do, and and even down to your show. You know, I heard about your show coming on. I said this could be a great thing. Not knowing you want to call me up, and this made me think about being on Jimmy's show a few weeks ago on the night show, and I uh, you you the night show to me because you here in Mississippi and and from Louisiana too, man. You know, I got a thing for you, man. You know, oh, yeah. likewise. Okay, so now the, the Jimmy Kimmel show. Tell us about that. Uh, Dan, Dan Akron, who was done in the, in the Jane Brown movie, called me up and said, I'm going to be in Mississippi, man. Would you come by this could break bread with me because we are friends. And he had such love for me. He invited me by the set. When I got by the set, one of the producers said, well, man, God, Bobby Ruff, we need you in a part of this. You were with the Jane Brown. And it was too late for me to get involved then because it's halfway over before they knew about I was involved with Jane Brown, the same age bracket a whole bit. And I wish I had a been. So he said, well, I, I want you to do something for me. And not knowing what he want, but I'll forever be grateful to what he's done. Jimmy, when he was say, I want to go on and do one of Jane Brown's songs. Then not knowing what we're going to do, he told me like a day before, we said, hey, what are we going to do? He texted it to me. And waned it out, went into no rehearsal, no whole bit, and just talked about what we're going to do. He came out doing the, did you want a Jane Brown song? So I lived, I knew the song anyway, you know, because being with Jane, you know, he knew I knew it. And we just waned it out, and man, it came out so good. He gave me the best prop that any man could ever get. You know, talked about me being the legend and the last of the kind, and he just laid it out. I'll forever in my life remember this man what he did and said about me. I'm Dr. Quinn, and I believe in the power of exercise. Many patients ask me if they're gonna get high blood pressure or diabetes because their parents had these conditions. I tell them that we cannot control our genetics, but we can control our diet and level of exercise. Practicing healthy decisions result in a better outcome. I'm Dr. Quinn, and I want you to remember that you have control. Bobby, uh, you were, during the break, you were telling me about a, a, a <laughs> blues story. Yeah, blues story is always in my head. I'm a blues man. You know, I was talking about Tony Joe White, talking about the pokes out of the hand, talking about this girl that's uh, bow-legged and, and not needed and what have you. But I sang a song close to that thing. I call it a bow-legged woman and a night deep man go hand in hand. And I give you three guesses who were bow-legged. First two don't count. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, someone asked me, said, well, Bobby Rush, what you, uh, why do you sing the blues? Is it because your woman leave you? 
You can have the blues when your woman leave you, but you can also have the blues when they stay too long. Let me tell you about it. Let me let me do it in a song for you. Have you ever been mistreated by someone you shouldn't have loved? Have you ever been mistreated by someone you shouldn't have loved? Out of all the men my woman could have left me for, she left me for the garbage man. No matter how bad she treated me, I still can't get a loving out of my mouth. No matter how bad she treated me, people, I still can't get a loving out of my mind. Every time I see a garbage can, I think about her in the garbage man all the time. If I ever get her to come back, I'm going to buy myself a garbage truck. <laughs> If I ever get my woman to come back home, I'm going to buy myself a garbage truck. When my garbage can't get full, I'm going to take it and dump it way, way out in the wood. That's the blues fight. That was uh, that was very interesting. <laughs> you never know what will happen in life, do you? Not when a garbage man pick it up everything but garbage. Lord that's a rough titty. That that is an interesting perspective a, on things. That's a tough titty and can't nothing to suck it but a lion. That is wow, that's a quite a story. <laughs> uh, well, we're gonna come back and talk a little bit we're more. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk a little bit more. We're we'll, gonna take a break and come back I'll with Mr. Glad, Bobby Rush. I'd be glad to come thank back. Thank you. It's so great to have well, you here with you. us. Thank you so much. Since 1849, Carter Jewelers has been a part of Jackson's rich history. Over 163 years later, we've not only survived, Carter Jewelers has flourished. From generation to generation, we've established a tradition of excellence. Our reputation is built on customer satisfaction, service, and trust. Every piece of jewelry is hand-picked, so you know you're getting the best value. Nobody says I do like we do at Carter Jewelers. Come see us and be part of our history. Welcome back to Nitek. Grady Champion is with us. And, and Grady, I tell you, you uh, we were talking during the break. You remind me of James Brown. <laughs> I've heard that one before. <laughs> so people tell you that. Uh, I hear it quite a bit. So what what do they say? I mean, you sound like James Brown. You look like James <laughs> Brown. I mean, what do they say? Well, I think it just I think it's the energy and then probably the raspiness of the voice, you know. And I think just like with James, we 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 come here as raw talent. You know what I'm saying? We raw, we keep it real, you know what I'm saying? Get out of that, all that good stuff. I actually auditioned to uh, play James in the movie, but you know, they had some more experience that was waiting on that thing, but. You know, I mean, uh, I can understand a very experienced actor uh, getting a big role like that, but if they want somebody to look like him, they talk, <laughs> they don't have to pick you, I think. So, uh, so okay, now, uh, how do you uh, explain your music? I mean, your sound? the new generation of blues artists. I mean, how do you explain that? How do you define it? Well, I just think my music is fun. It's fun. It, it grows. Because I take traditional blues, modern blues, and I bring it together and make Grady Champions Mississippi blues, baby. But it's, it's uh, I just think it's just about the growth of it and with, with me studying so much other traditional, the traditional blues and and uh, and also with me being involved in rap music, 
That's does that help you, you think? Now, that helped me a lot. How I mean, does it help you? As a performer on stage or? It helped me more at the time with my writing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, with... with um, By rhyming? Right, right. Mm -hmm. When I would write rap music, it relates well with, um, you know, with, with, with me writing my stories with the blues. And, and the raspy voice just was there. So as far as the writing, how big a part of uh, is writing in your career, I mean, as far as being not only a singer and a performer, but also, you know, a writer? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, like even on the, the album I just did with Malico, I wrote on about five of the songs. But I'm always writing stuff because I always have a story to tell. When you get out on the road and travel like we travel, there's always something you're going to see that you want to write about. We have a story to tell. <laughs> you know, we were talking before the break about the reception, for example, in Paris. What is, what is, uh, what's the, the, how do the folks relate? I mean, do they come up and want to talk to you, want to ask you questions about what's life like in Mississippi? Or, you know, how do they're they? They're very intrigued. That's the reason they're very intrigued about our lifestyle and uh, our music. And that made me, even with my, my album before this one, I did an album called Tough Time Don't Last. And I wrote a song called Mississippi Pride. So they play that a lot on Sirius XM Radio. And that tell everybody. See, a lot of them don't have to ask as much now, because when they listen to that song, I tell them how it is about being raised in Mississippi and the love that we have for our tradition and music. See, the, the, I think the Europeans have a, a, a they, they have a greater, they might have a greater understanding or perspective on American history than we as Americans do. That's right. You know what I mean? We know our history, but they know it even better than That's we right. do. That's right. Uh, the, the appreciation of it, see. Right. Um, they know where all of this emanates from historically. That's right. That's right. So the appreciation of the music is just unbelievable from the way they're, you know, I think they just, they just really just blown away by When you it. come out on a stage in Paris, for example, do you know when you come out, you're just ready to tear them up and knock ready, them out? Do you know that? Ready to have fun. Coco Rico. <laughs> and, and you just got them right then, right? You got them. That's right. It's ready, man. You got them at that moment. It's ready. That's something. That well, something. you know, like I say, it's, 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 it's a little different from, from here, but it's all about fun. They can tell when you're real with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and the Mississippi blues is authentic. And it's ours. We might loan it out, but you got to bring it and give it back. <laughs> All right, so tell us about this clip, this performance in Memphis at the TV station. Yeah, we went up, um, we performed it live at nine in Memphis, and, uh, and I performed the single Southside. And this is the new record on the Malico label. On the Malico label. Okay, well, let's take a look at uh, Southside. Look out, man. <laughs>
where you're from. But where I'm from, Miami, Florida. On the south side, it may be considered a hood. So that was fantastic. That was live, right? That was that live. That was all baby. live. Loud live. So, um, okay, now let's go back. Dreaming was the album from 2012, was 2011. it? 2011. 2011. Yeah. And it became the number one uh, uh, album on the Sirius Network's Bluesville That's Network, right, yeah. right? So you were number one on on on, right. on their charts with the album. That's right. And. Uh, and presently, uh, the new album from Malico, Bootleg Whiskey, which that song, Southside. Yeah, is, on, is on there, too. It's on Sirius. Well, sure. man, I, how do you feel about it? I mean, because Sirius is the good. greatest, you know? It make you feel good because people always hitting you up on Facebook, saying, I hear your song on Facebook, you know, calling me up, especially some friends of mine. So uh, now, tell me and all of our viewers about the video that was on YouTube that got 300,000 hits. Uh, make that monkey jump, everybody. Make, make that monkey jump. No matter where we go, they want to hear make that monkey jump. I got to play it sometime two, three times a night. All right, well, I guess I need to ask the question, what is make that monkey jump? It's what what dance, are we talking baby. about? It's a dance. It's a dance. Hey, everybody, let's have a ball. <laughs> make that monkey jump. <laughs> well, what's the monkey? I'm trying to figure oh, out. Oh, it's just a dance, baby. It's just, just a, a dance. dance, just a dance. I see. Yeah, we don't try to get too much into it, but it's just a dance. 300,000 hits. 300,000 hits. That's a pretty popular video. <laughs> yeah. That means they like that groove, man. <laughs> man, that's in incredible. So, okay, well, what's in your plans uh, going forward here? I know we got, we're, are we about 10 seconds out? Let's hold that question. The plans that you've got going forward, we're going to talk to Grady about that after this. Come right back. <laughs> Since 1849, Carter Jewelers has been a part of Jackson's rich history. Over 163 years later, we've not only survived, Carter Jewelers has flourished. From generation to generation, we've established a tradition of excellence. Our reputation is built on customer satisfaction, service, and trust. Every piece of jewelry is handpicked, so you know you're getting the best value. Nobody says I do like we do at Carter Jewelers. Come see us and be part of our history. With Grady Champion here on Nitique. So, okay, looking forward, the, the future, what are your plans? What, what's going on for the next year? Well, I tell you, getting on the road, we're getting shows booked where we're going to be back across in January. We're going back up to Canada, the Midwest, working our way back down, then going to Florida in February. So, <laughs> we just, we getting it together, just hitting that road, man. Do you find that being on the road is a tough a tough thing or do you have you adapted well to oh, it? Oh, I love it. I mean, I love it. We play, we rest. So you just got to manage your body. You got to manage your diet on that road and drink a lot of water. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and you know, I don't eat beef or pork. So before I go out, you know, in my rider, I have on there, you know, when they feed us that where you don't eat beef or pork and not, you know, fried food. So try to keep myself going. And do you find time to exercise? Oh, yeah. I mean, mean why the boys, the band will be still asleep. I'm up walking four, five miles around the city. So you get out and you go. Oh, yeah. Got to keep it together, baby. I think that's a, that's a, great, a great key because, you know, I mean, 
uh, if you take care of yourself, you can withstand that. That's right. You know, but if you don't, you know, well, even if you're not going on the road, you, you can't. You can't don't do, do very it. well if you're not working out and eating, you right? You gotta take care of your body, and you know, if you because you know, people living longer now. Yeah. And I always said, if I'm gonna be around a long time, I want to be able to take care of myself. The website and the the let's let's what the website is there it is it's gradychampion.com gradychampion.com and check me out on Facebook y'all like the page you know say <laughs> and so man good luck with everything going forward and uh, I know you're gonna be I'm sure going back to Europe before too long oh yeah and uh, in forward. Asia and all those places too right I'm ready my biggest thing I want you know just to get over to Japan Japan I know I that they'll to, love it because oh, they man. have a great appreciation. Okay, Looking great. Forward. Thank you, Grady, for coming. Thank you Thank for you, having man. me. Thank you, man. <laughs> Grady Champion, thanks for being with us.